Boom! Alright, what's up you guys? It's Roy, it's Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be discussing a few recent words from the richest man in the world, Mr. Elon Musk, as well as Rich Dad Poor Dad himself, Mr. Robert Kiyosaki, regarding a few of their concerns as well as their actions around the current state of the markets right now. All right, so this one is gonna be short and sweet. You guys will kick off the video by reading over this short article talking to Mr. Kiyosaki titled, Crashes Are the Best Times to Get Rich. Here's why Robert Kiyosaki thinks Bitcoin's plunge is great news and how you can take advantage of it. Okay, so we'll read through this, you guys, a little double whammy. It's been a while since we've had some Bitcoin news or since we've read an article covering Bitcoin. So this is a nice two for one right here. And uh, yeah, we'll get Mr. Rich Dad's thoughts on Bitcoin as well as why crashes do make you rich. And this guy would know he's been in the game for a very very long time if you guys haven't had haven't read a rich dad poor dad i highly recommend you guys read that um as a young man when i was like 17 or 18 i think i read that book twice when i was first getting into trading first getting into entrepreneurship and uh, that book made a big difference in my life so go read it if you haven't shout out to rich dad okay so after we read through that uh we will read over this article titled here is the email Elon Musk sent all Tesla employees about 10% headcount reduction. Okay, so at this point, um, if you follow the markets at all, I'm sure you heard about this. But this is definitely a sign of the times. And uh, Elon Musk has some words about his thoughts around the markets, uh, as well as, once again, uh, a very obvious action that was taken regarding his company which is a titan of industry within the markets so we'll read over this and uh, i will just give you guys my two cents on uh, everything we covered today okay maybe one cent you be the judge of that after we read over these i do want to read over the newsletter the primary macro newsletter that i sent out on friday uh spent a lot of time on this one because i do think that the current state of the macro pretty much in this market environment you guys the macro dictates everything we primarily cover growth stocks and, and small cap stocks here on the channel that's what i prefer to trade and invest in as a trader um, and investor of course but again you guys the macro is so crucial that uh, even if you're not playing mega caps even if you're not playing macro like indexes and whatnot um like i am personally or like i am not personally i guess it's important to know what's going on because when you know what's going on in the big picture it allows you to perform exceptionally on a smaller scale okay so macro and micro both there's a lot of there's a lot of carry over there okay so we'll read over this anyway cover some of that tesla news i'll give you guys my thoughts there uh cover the good old fear and greed index how we closed out last week uh the balance between small caps and large caps uh a few words from a hedge fund manager and we'll close it out with a few of my thoughts around the s p from a historical and technical perspective okay so that is the breakdown of the video, you guys. Let's get to reading. But uh, before we do, a like and a subscription, if you're not already subscribed, of course, is appreciated. you the best. Okay, so Bitcoin is on a wild ride. The world's largest cryptocurrency soared to $69,000 last November. Now it's at around $29,500, a staggering 57% pullback from the peak. If the downtrend continues, Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki says he's ready to start buying. Quote, Bitcoin crashing, great news. He tweeted recently, I'm waiting for Bitcoin to crash to 20K, then we'll wait for a test to test of bottom which might be seventeen thousand dollars once i know bottom is in i back up the truck crashes are the best times to get rich okay and of course this principle not only applies to bitcoin but so many great growth stocks uh great cryptocurrencies right after this i will be recording a video on like render mana sand that i'll actually be posting before this one so hope you enjoyed that but uh again you guys there's so many great opportunities in in a bloody market Again, you got to be a shark in these bloody waters. You have to be able to think rationally and keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the long term when um, a lot of other individuals, when a lot of retail Joes are getting scared out of the markets. Those who can withstand the storm deserve to be rich. OK, if you can withstand the storm, if you can take the, if you can, if you can bear with the punches, OK, if you're left standing, if you can sail these choppy waters and you are more experienced captain on the other side. Analogy was a bit scuffed, but you guys know what I'm saying. If you can weather the storm, you deserve to make it out the other side, okay? And you will be a very, you will be a, you will be a much wealthier man or woman on the other side. 
Okay, so Kiyosaki added that Bitcoin is the future of money and that his bottom may be even lower at $11,000. You guys know the deal? I personally think Bitcoin is not going to go below. Definitely not below 18000 I personally, my bottom target for BTC is $24,000. Um, but hey, the 2017 high was 20K. That's a very, very obvious uh, level that everyone's eyeballing, which also contributes to my downside price target for Bitcoin being 24 because everyone on their mom knows 20k is the obvious target everyone's going to be front running that especially funds and whales um setting buy orders around 22 to 24 thousand dollars i don't think personally we see twenty thousand dollars unless things get just super 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 ugly okay so uh, let's talk about mr elon musk key points tesla is cutting 10 percent of salary employees uh we'll cover that below a little more tesla shares dropped eight percent on the news i think it was down almost it was down like nine and a half ten percent on the day if you guys are part of the portfolio group, thank God. Thank God we had those Tesla puts as we closed out the week. Those kept the portfolio floating. And I mean, near profitable on Friday when the market was so bloody. So that's awesome. Uh, on Friday, President Joe Biden was asked about Musk's negative calm and negative economic outlook and said Tesla may be cutting back, but Ford and others were ramping up. Tesla CEO Elon Musk said in an email, which we will look over um, to close this one out, uh, to all employees at the electric vehicle maker on Friday that the company will cut 10% of salaried workers and will instead rely on more hourly workers. Shares of Tesla dipped 9% on Friday by mid-morning after Reuters reported an, early e an earlier email Musk had sent to executives about his plan to cut the company's workforce and expressing a super bad feeling about the economy. Okay, and we'll cover that. I'll give you guys my thoughts uh, on that in the newsletter. All right. To everybody, here is the email he sent directly to his executives. Uh, subject headcount reduction. Quote, Tesla will be reducing salaried headcount by 10% as we have become overstaffed in many areas. Note, this does not apply to anyone actually building cars, battery packs, or installing solar. Hourly headcount will increase. So, uh, again, if they're on the floor, if they're many, if it's, a, if it's, as he said, a warehouse job, it's a manufacturing job, um, they're actually increasing the amount of those employees, which which does speak to production models. So maybe production is ramping up. I personally don't think so. But uh, when it comes to their salaried headcount, again, office jobs and desk jobs and whatnot, they are cutting those off. OK, so uh, again, you guys, this is a sign of the times. If you watch my recent video, I do not think I mean a market recession is here has been here that's just two consecutive quarters of downside uh but an economic recession is very different if you watched the last video economic indicators we went over plenty of economic indicators in that last video or, or i guess two videos before this now but uh the video where i said we're not in a recession yet uh go over plenty of ma uh, macro economic indicators that don't paint the ugliest picture now again I think it's very likely that uh, there is a storm looming. There is, as Jamie Dimon said, a hurricane looming on the horizon. The scale of that is uh, to be determined. But uh, as of right now, everyone's running out of money. But the economy, I mean, it's not, I think it's not as bad or objectively, it's not as bad based off of all those economic indicators we've been covering so much lately. It's not as bad as many people think, at least at this point, a lot of of that negative uh the negative headwinds are priced into the at least the markets okay because the markets are a precursor to the economy itself so uh let's read over this and then we'll call it a day although i remain bearish on our primary growth pos positions the macro bearish news just keeps coming and on friday it was in the form of layoffs and hiring freezes the first was coinbase so coinbase I'm sure you heard we won't be diving into this now, but Coinbase Brian Armstrong came out, said they would be freezing hiring. Crypto winter is here. They got to slow things down. And they're actually, um, oh God, I can't think of the freaking word for it. It's kind of like revoking something like revoking job offers that were sent out. So that's 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 bad. But again, you guys, at times like these, when you are burning through cash and you got to cut costs, this is the necessary evil, unfortunately. And the second, which is definitely stirring up the pot a bit more, is Tesla. The hiring freezes and layoffs are worrisome. But Elon didn't do the bulls any favors by saying that he has a super bad feeling about the economy. Maybe he's prepping his investors for a bad May delivery report, which I personally think is the case. But come on. This shouldn't come as new news to anyone at this point. On a brighter and somewhat more ironic note, the May jobs report came out today as well, or on Friday, and the numbers were better than the Dow Jones estimated. The U.S. economy added 390,000 jobs last month, while the estimate was just under 330K. That's a solid beat. 
The Fear and Greed Index, good old Fear and Greed, is currently sitting at a 28, and we have reclaimed levels of fear as opposed to extreme fear, but just barely. I still believe more upside mean reversion is on the short-term time horizon for the markets overall. I think the S&P 500 can climb by a few percent by the end of next week, but I think small caps will continue to significantly outperform large caps. Again, to understand why that is, watch actually the beginning of once again. We're not in a recession yet. Small caps will still rally. OK, that title may be a little be a little deceiving because I am talking about a short to medium term when it comes to small caps rallying like the bull market is not back yet, at least in my opinion. But when it comes to a relief rally, when it comes to a bear market rally, like we'll cover right here, that's I mean, that's the name of the game, you guys. And again, it's important to remember this is a trader's market. I'm a trader. I'm not right now. I'm focusing. I have my investment positions. I have my long term positions, but uh, I feel like it's important to reiterate to you guys and for you to know that I am a trader. OK, I'm a very I'm very, a very active market participant, not a day trader, but I am a swing trader and I'm more active than most. This is not a set it and forget it. Uh, I mean, even the portfolio, the newsletter is macro. This is fun. like you can enjoy this. and I do put a lot of work into this to not only include trading. Of course, I do include the trade alerts as well and stuff. So I'll just plug it right now. If you guys want to know exactly how I'll, I'll be trading my personal portfolio, the waves capital portfolio throughout the course of the weekend for however long you may be subscribed along with the daily newsletters. This is the macro. This is the second newsletter I send out every single day. I send a total of three. The first is the trade alert. That is the most time sensitive. So I send out the trade alert first. Uh, last week was an amazing week. You guys absolutely crushed it. No shame in uh, being proud of the wins because they were well deserved. Uh, so trade alert, the macro newsletter. And then the last one is price targets and analysis where I include uh, four to five charts, but actually four to six charts every given day. Um, regarding the most important names that we covered in the portfolio, uh, particularly uh, concerning our trades. Okay, so uh, if you want to check that out, there is still a little bit of time left to take advantage of the free seven day trial, then it is 15 bucks a month after that. I mean, I know money's tough, you guys, but this is, in my opinion, way more than worth it. And uh, this would have paid itself many times over in the past month alone. Okay, regarding how much you may be trading with, or uh, I'm sorry, um, Dis disregarding how much you may be trading with. Even if it's a small amount, this would have paid itself off many, many times over this past month, okay? So uh, go check it out. You be the judge of whether it is for you or not. If you want to do that, first link in the description box below. Appreciate it if you check it out. And uh, yeah, you're welcome at the same time. And uh, I do truly appreciate you for watching this video too. Attention is huge. Okay, so back into the mix. I still believe more upside mean revis reversion. Sorry, I read that already. Uh, let's read it over. The fact that we're seeing the Russell 2K, again, small cap index down less than the Dow, S&P and NASDAQ today is a validating sign of this. You can see the Russell at the time I took a screenshot, not even a down a percent. Well, the NASDAQ down 2.5%, S&P 1.5%, and Dow Jones uh, down just a little more than the Russell, but still. Uh, that is impressive. To close it out, I want to share a few words from an article I read this morning regarding an interview with hedge fund manager Dan Niles. Quotes, I think you have to take a big picture perspective, which is that which is that the sharpest rallies are during bear markets. Niles told CNBC on Thursday. He noted that the S&P 500 had experienced five rallies of between 18 to 21 percent during the global financial crisis and the tech bubble before eventually declining about 50 percent both times. I won't be breaking down the fundamental differences between the 2022 crash and the financial crisis again. But the main point here is that the S&P tends to see short-term rallies of 18 to 21% during macro bear markets. To reiterate, I definitely don't think that the S&P 500 has seen its bottom yet, but I do think more short-term upside is in store as we move through the month of June. So again, you guys, this is a, this is, although we do as much research, research and due diligence as we can to skew the odds in our favor to get the best idea of what could come. Uh, it's important to remember that this is still a very uncertain macroeconomic environment. The markets are still highly emotional. They are still highly fearful, which is why we've been looking so much at the fear and greed index and bull bear indicators lately. So just keep that in mind, you guys, stand your toes, but always know my money is where my mouth is. If you want to know what, what, uh, what plays have been absolutely printing for the waves fam, again, that's the first link down in the description box below. Uh, welcome to the team in advance, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Until then, always remember, take action, make waves. Peace.